What is going on guys welcome back in this video today we're going to take a look at a package called latecify which allows us to take our python functions and render them as mathematical formulas or turn them into latex code very easily so let us get right into it All right, so we're going to take a look at Latecify in this video today, which is a Python package developed by Google that allows us to easily take our Python functions and turn them into mathematical formulas or algorithms written in LaTeX without having to write any LaTeX ourselves. All we have to do is we have to add uh, an annotation above the function, maybe specify one or two parameters, depending on what we want to have. And then we get a beautiful formula or a beautiful algorithm, including the corresponding LaTeX code. So I want to get right into it. But first of all, we need to install the package. So open up your terminal and type pip or pip3 install and then latecify dash py. Now regarding the pronunciation, some people call it latex, some people call it latex, some people call it uh, latex. I think latex is the most common, most correct pronunciation. So this is what I'm going to call it. And because of that, it's also called in this video, at least latecify. So install this and then we're going to go into a Jupyter notebook. Now, in my opinion, this package is extremely useful. If you want to take notes for yourself, if you want to upload a notebook somewhere uh, where people can look at it, if you're presenting it somewhere, maybe as a teacher, as an educator, as someone who makes videos, or if you just want to showcase it in your GitHub repository, it doesn't matter. But I think that this package has um, has many use cases where it can prove to be very useful. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to code one example from scratch to, so, uh, to show you how it's done. And then I'm going to copy paste a couple of uh, examples to show you the different use cases and the different things that you can do here. So what we're going to do first is we're going to import math. And then we're also going to import latecify. And let's do something simple. Let's code a sigmoid activation function. So the sigmoid activation function takes in some value x. Oftentimes, it's also z. Actually, let's call it z. Um, and what it does is it returns one over one plus e to the power. So math exp e to the power of negative z. And that is the sigmoid function. So or sigmoid function. Uh, so if I just print a function, you see it's a function. If I call the function on some value, you can see I get some value very close to one because it goes from zero to one, basically. Um, and now all I have to do to actually get the LaTeX code that renders this function as a mathematical formula is I have to say at LaTeXify uh, dot function. And then I just have to say sigmoid. And what I get here is the sigmoid activation function as a formula. Now, if I want to have the latex, a latex code, what I have to do is I have to just say print sigmoid. And you can see that this is uh, the code that results in this uh, rendering here. And I can copy paste that into a paper into a document that I'm writing, whatever. But this is just way more convenient than opening up markdown cells and using dollar signs, uh, and then manually coding all the formulas if you want to have a notebook that people understand because maybe you want to code this sigmoid activation function, because you're teaching people how to implement a neural network from scratch, you define this function and you want to show it as a formula. Problem is that you don't want to always type all the latex code yourself. So what you can do is you can just call this and it's done. You can also replace function by expression if you want that uh, by doing that you basically get rid of the sigmoid. So you basically just get one over one plus e to the power of negative uh, z. And uh, you can also do stuff like replace. Um, so if you say function, what you can do is you can replace certain keywords. So right now it's called sigmoid z. And what I can do, for example, is I can say, as a parameter here, I can specify identifiers. And I can replace using a dictionary basically everything with something else. So I can say sigmoid shall be replaced with s, for example, or by s, for example, and now I get s of z. Now this also works with a sigma. Uh, but if I want to have this as a mathematical uh, character, so if I actually want to have 
uh, the Greek symbol, I have to say use math symbols equals to true. And then I get the sigma here. So you can do it like that as well. Now I'm not sure if this also works for x and e, I didn't try that. So uh, actually, we need a colon here, but I'm not sure I don't think that this works like that. No, okay. So probably there's some other way to get the x to look like an e I didn't look into that yet. Uh, but basically, you can say use math symbols to take things like sigma or theta or alpha and beta to take them and turn them into Greek letters. If you provide this um, parameter here as true, it's going to do that. And by specifying the identifiers dictionary, you can take stuff like the function name and turn it into something else. So I want to show you here another example, let's copy and paste a simple Fibonacci implementation here, a recursive one shouldn't be something uh, that is confusing, we just have a simple Fibonacci implementation if n is one return zero, if n is two return one. And if n is not one or two, we're assuming that there are no negative values here, uh, then just call recursively on n minus one and n minus two, and then sum up the result basic Fibonacci idea. So we get zero, one, one, two, three, and so on. And if I want to display that function here as a formula, guess what all I want to do here, or all I have to do here is I have to say latecify function. And I can say Fibonacci recursive, and you even get this um, conditional structure here. And again, don't forget if you print that, you're actually going to get the corresponding latex code. Now, in this case, now I don't like the way it says Fibonacci recursive. So what I can do again, here is I can say identifiers is equal to a dictionary. And I can say Fibonacci recursive shall be replaced by fib. And by doing that, there you go, we have this notation. Now, I can do the same thing. Uh, but not as a function, but as an algorithm. So let's say I want to have the exact same thing. But now I want to have this as an algorithm code. What I can do is I can say latecify algorithmic. And now what I get here is I get this uh, rendering here, I get function Fibonacci n if else, else and if and if and function. So I get the pseudocode, the algorithmic pseudocode based on my function, all of this without writing any code myself. And here I also get again, the latex code. So that's super impressive already, I can do the same thing here with the collets algorithm. So I can just copy paste this. If I now call this, you can see I get uh, the proper symbols, I get the floor division, I get the assignments, everything is taken care of here. And um, yeah, this is this is just super convenient, because I don't have to do anything myself. Um, just another example here for the Greek letters, I can do some trigonometric function with theta with cosine and sine. And also I can do stuff like summation. So if I have a function like this summation where I have some i squared for i in range one n plus one, what I get is I actually get this sigma here, i equals one starts at one goes up until n n plus one already recognizes that. So if I change that to n, it's actually going to be n minus one, this is also quite intelligent. And i squared is the term and then we sum up all of this. So it recognizes that and it easily um, renders that into a mathematical formula. And then I have an example here, which I took from the examples of the GitHub repository. So this is something you can find on their GitHub. Uh, this is some matrix uh, transformation, we have uh, scaling, rotating and moving a vector. And this is also what you can render here easily, mathematically. And if we print that as LaTeX code, you can see it's quite a bit and you don't want to necessarily do that manually. So this for me is a super interesting, super useful package, because I like to take notes a lot, I like to learn stuff in Jupyter notebooks. So code, learn, write down formulas, experiment with them, have this collection of Jupyter notebooks where I can revisit ideas, also, I like to prepare Jupyter notebooks for videos for teaching for presenting stuff. Um, and I also present stuff, maybe in a business context, or maybe in a university context. So this is a very useful and very interesting package for me. 
So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting the like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.